Thank you for watching this free video tutorial from our course Comprehensive Introduction to Arnold for 3ds Max. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out. Uh, we discuss Arnold's volume in this lesson. So in the Create panel, if you go to the Arnold section, you have this Arnold volume. Now, before starting this lesson, I want you to open up your browser and go to openvdb.org slash download. Come down here. Uh, they have this uh, sample models. Go ahead and download these uh, four files, this uh, smoke one and two and explosion and fire and extract them into a folder on your hard drive. If you go to your project files for this course and in this OpenVDB uh, folder, I have these uh, OpenVDBs and uh, some other OpenVDBs from our support page that you can uh, access them here if you wanted to. Let me close this windows. Now we use Arnold volume to load volumetric files stored in formats such as OpenVDB, which is an open source library developed by DreamWorks Animation and it is capable of efficiently storing and manipulating volumetric data. I don't want to get into technicalities that much here. I just want to show you the workflow and how to use OpenVDB files in Arnold for 3ds Max and hopefully get you interested in the subject and maybe you can learn how to create uh, your own OpenVDB files in softwares like SideFX Houdini. Obviously to load the volumetric file that you are interested after clicking on this volume, you just need to click and drag in the viewport. Now in the modify panel, you can go ahead and actually load the VDB file that you want to import it. So let me click on this browse button. And in this case, I'm just going to load this explosion.vdb. When you try to load an open VDB file after selecting the file, you are prompted with this select VDB grid to use. Here you are able to choose the parameter and velocity grids in the VDB file and make them available to the shader, which is basically the standard volume shader. You can see the open VDB file that we have selected here, this explosion file, has density, temperature, and velocity grids. Let's make sure we are making all those grids available, make sure they are checked. So they become available for our volume, uh, basically our standard volume shader and choose velocity as the velocity grid. Now, as you can see down here in this window, we have this set up a default standard volume shader enabled. So this way, when we press OK, not only we have imported our OpenVDB file, we have also assigned a standard volume shader to it. Now, if this option is disabled, we need to manually create the standard volume shader or material and apply it to the OpenVDB file after the import. Now, if I press OK, we have imported our volume in the modify panel. You can see we have this uh, volume uh, shader here that has been assigned to the volume and we can drag it to the material editor and adjust the look of the volume using this shader. Under grids, we have all the available channels that this OpenVDB file has, which is density, temperature, and velocity. And under velocity grids, we are using velocity channel uh, that we have. And basically, we are defining our velocity field. And in this case, it is just uh, this one vector grid that can be used with motion blur. Now, another important parameter that we have is this ray marching step size, and this sets the size for sampling inside the volume, and it should be small enough to capture the smallest feature in the volume. And if the size is too large, aliasing, bias, or banding will appear, and smaller and therefore more accurate sizes will increase render times, while larger sizes will render more uh, quickly, but obviously with more artifacts and aliasing issues that might happen. So you need to keep this volume uh, as low as you need. So if you saw some artifacts and banding and aliasing in your volume, you can decrease this volume. Now let's open our uh, material editor here. Actually, before opening the material editor, let me just select the volume here and just adjust its position. Okay, there we go. 
now let's open up our material editor and drag this standard volume shader and now let me select the material let's create some space here without changing anything if I run the active shade you can see we get this dramatic explosion. Now let's take a quick look at the volume standard shader and the most important parameters there. Basically this standard volume shader is a physically based volume shader. So if you want to actually create it individually, if you right click materials, Arnold volume, as you can see, you have access to the standard volume, but because the when we imported the scene, we had that option checked now, the standard volume has been automatically assigned to our uh, volume metric file. Now, the standard volume is a physically based volume shader and it provides independent control over uh, volume density, scatter color, and transparent color. Also, black body emission is used to render fire and explosions directly from uh, physics simulations. Now, each component can be controlled by a volume channel coming from the volume object and with other parameters acting as multipliers on the channel. Now, the first parameter that we have is this density, and this is the density of the volume. Uh, with low density, like let's say 0.1, let me just for the time being zero out the temperature so we can focus on the uh, basically smoke component of our volumetric data. So as you can see, low density values will result in thin volumes and obviously high densities in thick volumes. So if I go to something like two, you can see we start to get thicker and thicker volumes, maybe to something like five, maybe back to 0.2 here. You can see now it's a lot thinner. Now let's set the density back to one. Now we have the density channel, which is the density channel to read from the volume object. And as you can see, it's set to density because we have the density channel available. Now uh, we have this scattering intensity. Let me just set the temperature back to one here for now. We have this, actually we can set this temperature back to zero for the time being, just to take a look at the scattering section as well. So scattering intensity basically controls the brightness of the volume under illumination. If I just go to something like 0.1, this is what we get, darker volume, now a brighter volume. We have the scattering color, which is the color of the volume under illumination. So by default, it's set to this middle gray. I can make it a bit brighter, or maybe I can choose a whole other color if I want to have something else, right? There you go, maybe you can assign a gradient to here and create some fascinating things. Let me just cancel this for now. Now in the transparency section, we have some additional control over the density of the volume to tint the color of volume shadows and objects seen through the uh, volume. So if I change the color maybe to something else, you can see how the shadows are changing the color. And also I can use this, if I use darker values or brighter values, you can see we get more transparent volume here. Now we have this emission mode down here, which by default is set to block body. And in this mode, the volume emits color and intensity based on the uh, temperature for rendering fire and explosion. We have this, uh, for example, channel mode. Now in this uh, mode, uh, the light will be emitted using a specific emission channel. Uh, that you can define down here in this channel section. Now before continuing with these parameters, let's increase the block body temperature, which is this one here, and you control its parameters down here to one, so you can actually see some fire and heat. We have the emission intensity, which decreases or increases the emission. So if I go to something like 0.1, 
you can see the effect. Now we have decreased the emission by setting it to two. Let's set it to one. We have the emission color, which is uh, you can define a color here to tint the emission. So if I maybe use a blue color, as you can see, I can control how the fire can look and it's really up to you. Uh, we obviously have this emission channel and as I mentioned if uh, the in channel emission mode up here uh, you can actually define the emission channel to sample the emission rate from. Let's set this to black body again. We have the black body temperature and if a black body channel is used this acts as a multiplier for the black body temperature so maybe 0 0.1 0 0.3 1 2 3 so as you can see you can simply increase the temperature we have the black body channel which is set to temperature by default and in black body emission mode the temperature channel to read from the volume object can be defined in this channel section here let's uh, set the temperature back to one we have this kelvin value here which is a multiplier for the temperature from the temperature volume channel so if i go to something like 2500 or 4000 sorry 4000 8,000 so as you can see it's a simple multiplier here 5,500 maybe and finally we have this intensity which controls the intensity of the black body emission so maybe 0.2 so as you can see this is the effect we get by decreasing the overall intensity now to clean up your volumes make sure your lights in the scene have enough uh, volume samples so if I select the lights you can see we have this volume samples and if you saw some direct noise in the volumes you can increase the volume samples of the lights that you have in the scene now if you want to have multiple scattering if i just go to my render setting and arnold render here if you want to have multiple scattering in your volume you need to go to a render setting and uh, in these uh, volume indirect uh, ray depth volume increase the volume ray depths until you are satisfied with the uh, result so let's render the scene one time with volume indirect sample set to zero and one time with something like two and take a look at the difference there so here is our render with uh, volume indirect ray depth set to zero let me create a copy now let's set the volume indirect to something like maybe two and take a look at the difference. Now as you can see in the second render with the volume indirect rate depth set to two because now we are basically letting our volume to affect indirect lighting we are getting this more realistic this kind of volume scattering effect in the second render which is not visible in this first one now when you're increasing the volume ray depths obviously if you see any noise in the uh, indirect lighting that the volume contributing to the scene you need to increase the volume indirect samples here okay now you can go ahead and explore different aspects of uh, standard volume shader and try out uh, different things that you can do here also there are some other openvdb files that you have downloaded from the openvdb.org that you can actually uh, load them here and try to uh, understand how uh, the arnold volume works and kind of practice with them thank you for watching this free video tutorial from our course comprehensive introduction to arnold for 3ds max make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out